we moved here recently from River House to uh, Lambeth Hospital Bridge House. It's a female forensic ward and obviously they have mental health issues. And at the moment we're having a party that we normally have once a month. We have all different patients with some with personality disorder, some uh, depression, some also with schizophrenia. Sometimes the challenge is uh, how they, they mix together. Sometimes also the challenges of violence and aggression. And we work strongly as a team. And we know um, the relapse signs of, of patients and we quickly intervene. I encourage innovation, new ideas how to engage de-escalation, negotiation. And the patient have seen quite a lot of the efforts that staff have put in and engaging them in bingo, playing cars, table tennis. For 15 months, we haven't used seclusion, which wasn't the case previously. The violence and aggression has reduced over 50%, and we communicate effectively among ourselves. ES1 ward is female PICU, psychiatric intensive care unit. It's 10 bedded, so it's 10 patients on the ward, and it's the only female PQ in the trust. Mm. Let me help you cut it in half. Okay. okay, it's not good enough for us, actually, and um, we always aim for the best, and we, um, we've been involved in, in quite a few um, QI projects, which is to enhance what we do. So we've had the hospital rooms project, the sensory room, the inhaled loxapine um, trial as well, and we're starting with the Oxy Health project, and, you know, among many, many other day-to-day -day things that, that we do well together. We're like a, a small unit, like a family, you know, everyone cares. You know, seeing these women come in, they are acutely unwell, they are very distressed, and then when you see them stabilising, they are getting well, they are engaging with you. So. That's where the joy comes from. So yeah, I'm here and I love what I'm doing. I nominated ES1 because I feel they've achieved so much this past year. They've really demonstrated what you can achieve when you work together as a multidisciplinary team. You see some quite challenging things on the wall that can be quite upsetting. So I guess seeing those things can be difficult, but it's at those times almost that we pull together the most as a team. So even though that's horrible, we will then spend time reflecting, you know, making each other a cup of tea, sitting down and having a chat and just making things feel better and working out plans of how we can support that person to come through those things. So even though it's a difficult thing, it still doesn't feel so bad. So this, we spent some money because it was quite bland before and we got you know, some artists did some artwork here which the patient decided what he wanted. My name is Amadou Timbo. I am the ward manager of Tony Hillis unit. We work with very complex um, men with various challenges um, in terms of mental health issues. Um, so we take patients from, um, I would say, all over the country. So it's a specialist service. People are referred from all over and mainly people who they will have been in um, services for a very long time and people are struggling to manage whatever difficulties, whether it's violence, aggression, abscontion, people who have been tried with different medications, that's not making a lot of difference in terms of recovery. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> this is Kate. Kate is our physical health lead nurse. Um, we have a well-established team on this ward. Um, I've got about 32 staff in total. Um, most of the staff on this ward have been around for a very long time. We decided to get involved in what we call the AIMS um, Accreditation Network, which is something to do with um, a network working with mental health services. Um, we got involved in that project at a very short notice. Um, we decided we should go for it with all our might, put it that way. We worked really hard and recently, we, I think in SLAM, we are one of the only ward that's been accredited what we call AIM status. We call it recovery, but giving people hope. We have people coming to us that a lot of services have actually given up. 
when we invite, say, commissioners or care coordinators, people coming back to meetings after months and see somebody that they thought, my God, what did you do? You know, they would ask those questions, what did you do? And sometimes we didn't do anything special. We engaged people. We gave people hope that they can, they can improve. They can get better. They don't have to go back to being employed full time, but they have hope to be able to sustain a life outside of hospital. And we've done that really well for a lot of our patients.